Hey guys, and welcome to this arena playstyle guide for Fire Mage. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick update on Azerite traits and changes to the default talent setup, as well as covering some of the best compositions you should be running. Finally, we're going to be covering your general playstyle and goals in arena as a Fire Mage. First up, let's begin with Azerite traits, as these have drastically changed since our Get Started video. Now as Fire, there is one trait which stands far above the rest, and that is Blaster Master. What this does is give you a huge boost of mastery after using Fire Blast. And with Fire Blast being core to your burst and a guaranteed critical strike, your Ignite is going to be deal dealing some insane burst. Aim to get this three times, and it's even worth dropping higher item level pieces for this trait. But if for some reason you've been unlucky and are unable to get this trait, any of these are a much weaker but still decent alternative. Battlefield Precision for Alliance and Battlefield Focus for Horde, Tidal Surge, Fire Mind or Archive of the Titans. As for stat priority, look to aim for Haste, Versa, Mastery, then Critical Strike. Now your talent should look like this, changing only the first row depending on playstyle or composition. Firestarter offers more opening bursts so it can be very good for compositions where you heavily rely on getting good openers, such as when playing with a Rogue for example. Pyromaniac is for those that prefer some more RNG burst. And finally, Searing Touch. This offers you a little extra finishing power. All three of these are so close, however, it's entirely personal preference. As for the level 60 row, it's now recommended to take Flame On, as this grants you an extra charge of Fire Blast, as well as reducing the cooldown, synergizing well with our preferred Azerite trait of choice, Blaster Master. Phoenix Flame still has the downside of breaking polymorphs if targets stack, but should still be run if unable to get the Blaster Master traits. In regard to PvP talents, you should always still run Gladiator's Medallion to combine with your Shimmer, Counterspell or Temporal Shield to help you survive or to make an aggressive play. There is only really one talent you should run all the time once you have your Blaster Master traits, and that is Controlled Burn. This makes your burst that much stronger as it will enable your ignite which is your mastery to deal its damage 100% faster. What you play in conjunction with controlled burn depends heavily on the situation, but more often than not you will also want greater pyroblast. This is a great ability you can cast during downtime, dealing some insane damage and is a great tool to get kicks out of the way. Then it's always nice to have a defensive option, for this you should in most cases take temporal shield. It's also worth mentioning Kleptomania, Dampened Magic and Prismatic Cloak and even Flame Cannon are all options that can be considered in certain matchups and situations. Fire Mage is currently the best mage specialization. Let's cover which comps you should be looking to play. First up is probably one of the strongest compositions in the game and that is Fire Mage, Holy Paladin, Assassination Rogue. This comp is so strong thanks to all three of these classes playing so well off each other. They all cover each other's weaknesses. Assassination lacks the stuns that Sub does to help set up crowd control for the Fire Mage. However, Fire Mage doesn't need this assistance thanks to Dragon's Breath and the Hammer of Justice provided by the Holy Paladin. Also, one of Fire's major weaknesses is that it doesn't have slows that Frost does. But this doesn't matter as much when playing with an Assassination Rogue as they can easily slow the enemy team with Crippling Poison. And Paladin helps also with this bringing Blessing of Freedoms and Protections to help you kite. Next up is the Priest variant of Fire Mage Assassination Rogue. A little weaker than the Paladin alternative, but still very strong in certain matchups, with Priest bringing some extra damage as well as Dark Archangel for some added burst. However, bear in mind Dragon's Breath and Psychic Scream share a diminishing return, so it's often worth using these on separate targets. Lastly is Fire Mage, Destruction Warlock, Paladin, Resto Druid or even Restoration Shaman. This composition likes to try to set up one shots with both DPS spamming their hard hitting spells, Chaos Bolt and Greater Pyroblast, inside of either Bashes or Hammer of Justices, while still having very strong crowd control provided by Polymorph and Fear. But more often than not, it's simply best to PvE and outlast your opponents until you connect some of those hard hitting spells. Why play Fire Mage over Frost Mage? Well it's simple, Fire Mage has some of the strongest burst in the game currently, and has a much easier job landing crowd control than Frost. 
We're going to split this section into what I consider the most important aspects of Fire Mage, and that is burst, crowd control, and what you should be doing in the downtime between. First, let's start with the good stuff, bursting. This is what Fire Mage is all about and why it's so much stronger than the other two specializations. Your burst as Fire Mage consists of Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, and Meteor, combining these abilities with Combustion when available. To burst without casting, you must follow this rotation. First, pop your Meteor on the target who is ideally stunned or locked down. This has a 3 second delay before landing. Then press Combustion, followed up by Fire Blast into another Fire Blast, into Pyro Blast, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast. You can also deal some extra damage by already having a heating up proc before you start your burst window, meaning you are able to gain an extra Pyro Blast. And then Scorching into Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, to finish the target off, thanks to Sear in Touch. You also don't need Combustion to do this setup. Every 45 seconds, look to burst the same way with Meteor. Fire Mage also has an easier job setting up crowd control by itself, which is why it's so strong when paired with an Assassination Rogue. The main reason for this is thanks to Dragon's Breath. This is a 4 second disorient that will cause the enemy to walk around in a small circle, similar to Blind. This is a great tool for assisting you to land polymorphs onto healers. Simply by landing your Dragon's Breath onto the healer and any DPS grouped up with them, and then casting Polymorph. A huge strength of fire is also that its main source of damage is on a separate school to both of its crowd controls. This makes Ring of Frost all that more powerful, meaning you have Dragon's Breath, Polymorph and Ring of Frost, all three crowd controls on different schools of magic. So in some situations, you can Dragon's Breath into Ring of Frost. If kicked on the Ring of Frost, can simply cast a Polymorph and vice versa. Also in some situations, it's also worth to Dragon's Breath the DPS to remove interrupts out of the equation, so you can more easily land your Polymorph onto the healer. This is great when the healer has no counterplay, such as Windshear, Grounding Totem or Premonition. In the downtime between bursting or looking for crowd control on the healer, there is many things you should be doing. First up is creating pressure. This can be done by hardcasting greater pyro blasts. This is good for either getting kicks out of the way, or forcing the enemy to play defensive. Or if one lands, it's great at buttering up your enemy for your next burst window. It's also worth noting that you can do some insane burst if you do manage to get a greater pyro blast off, and use the travel time to then do a setup, as this will be enough damage to almost one-shot anybody by yourself. Although, try to avoid casting Greater Pyroblasts on setups, as if you get interrupted, you'll simply have zero damage for the setup, and doing your normal Meteor Burst will deal more damage anyway. Next up is Sheepin. This is great to relieve some pressure and to force kicks out of the enemy again, so that you have the easier time landing your crowd control when doing a setup, as well as allowing you to freely cast Greater Pyroblasts. It's also good to keep up Blazing Barrier off cooldown, this will absorb some damage and also deal some extra damage to melee. It's also worth noting that Fire Blast is off the global cooldown and can be used while casting a spell already. This can help in both landing burst and assisting in landing crowd control by using it to do such things as removing grounding totem or making your burst that much stronger. Spell Steel should also be used to remove important healing over time effects or buffs like Blessing of Freedom and Blessing of Protection, and even other mages Combustion or Icy Veins. Okay guys, that just about wraps up this Fire Mage Arena playstyle guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave any questions or comments you still may have below.